NCTV 45, the train, anytime on your time. Today's programming is brought to you by NCTV 45 and NC Radio 450, Newcastle's community television station. This program furnished by Sporting Goods, 23 East Washington Street, Newcastle. Call 724-658-2535. Welcome everyone to the Cedar Sports Corner. I'm Alex Laverson, and just like that shot right there, uh, I'm feeling pretty soft and pretty melancholy. Uh, Let's look at Red Skins Red. Yeah, like I can't yeah. even put enough energy into that shot. I'm, what? It's not that I'm necessarily upset that the Chiefs won. I'm just upset at the fact that you're going to be gloating about your score prediction. And I'm never going to hear the end of that until uh, next week. You know what? Uh, I mean, that, that's literally what I'm... It's, it's, upset about. It, it's this easy that I said before the game, talking to my son, 31, 20, and lo and behold, I predicted the Chiefs to win. Listen, seven minutes, listen, seven minutes left, okay? Niners up by 10, all right? And then it was easy to get said they had a three, the Chiefs had a three percent chance of winning at that time. Three percent. And listen, man, we are going to see really something special with Patrick Mahomes. I mean, we got to give credit where credit is due. And he did not have his best game by any means. However, just like I'm not having my best game now. <laughs> However, I feel like the best trait. Well, maybe one of the most underrated traits a player can have is when they're performing terrible and they're able to turn it around right when they need Well, that's you know what, no, give Andy Reid some credit here. Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, I mean, Andy Reid, you know, I, I, I want to say when you have a terrible, terrible type year like the 49ers had and you start on the comeback trail that's like really kind of ridiculous. I mean they went from worst to first. Well I mean over the years <coughs> over the years they did it, I would think you were really trying to say I mean I remember you know Harbor left the Niners you know they were struggling you know, and then finally they make it back to the Super Bowl, you know, seven years later. But I don't Do you remember at that point in the game where all those Niner players celebrated in the end zone and they took that group picture, that frame, like they already won the game. I looked at my I was at a Super Bowl party yesterday for my friend who's a diehard Niner fan. I said right then and there, that's gonna change the whole game for them. Casey is gonna get PO'd. And boom. I'm not saying that in and of itself changed the game, but talk about premature celebrations. You can't, you know, you're gloating. The Super Bowl's not done with. Like, come on, like. Well, I had, I had a game-winning pizza to celebrate the contest. Now, we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back after this. And watch out, let's play some more pool. Not the best pool, I'm literally just shooting balls. <laughs> If you're craving hot dogs and more, and you're in the area, then look no farther than Coney Island, downtown Newcastle on Kennedy Square. Easy clean car and van wash. 
where your clean wash is our goal. This program was provided through funding from Cedars Restaurant in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. A special thanks to Cedars featuring Middle Eastern, Italian, and American cuisine. And we're back, and um, I know you want to talk about something other than football right now. Uh, well, I'm, I'm having an issue, and uh, the issue that I'm having is the Duquesne Dukes. And first of all, if you're wondering where we are playing pool, we're in the beautiful Majestic. And uh, I just wanted to show you what that pool room looks like, and it is great. Now, the Dukes, this is the umpteenth million season where they start off like a house on fire. And then get to February and fade faster than the winter snow. Well, here's the deal. There's a, obviously a few reasons for that. You know, conference play, competition gets tougher, but also, man, you have to realize how many games each team plays. So you're gonna have your stretches where you're not, you know. Yeah, but they can't afford the stretch to, well, yeah, to you true. know, I mean, You'll, you'll look at 15 wins and then you drop five in the last two weeks. Well, I see, and you know, we were talking about that in one of our previous shows, you know, and it, it's just so hard when you're a school. But that's not from, I would say, I would call a power conference. So, yeah, losing five games in a row, you pretty much do bury yourself you knock yourself out of contention yeah. unless you win your conference tournament. That that's over like two weeks. Yeah, you know, and no. that's just not uh, one of the things that you want to do. It, it's a, it's a very dangerous type situation. Now, the team that is coming on in Pittsburgh, if if I would, is the P Pittsburgh Penguins. Oh, you're not going to say the Pitt Panthers had a good one yesterday over Miami. They're coming around. Listen. Miami's, Miami's a bubble team at best. I don't see them making a difference. Well, for what Pitt was a couple of years ago, eight total wins, zero wins in the conference, too. There's discussion of them possibly making the tournament. I say, you know, Jeff Capel, you're doing a good job, man. You're on the right track. And then... Hopefully he doesn't take the Duke job in a few years, but yeah, maybe I'll jump with the gun there. But you know, as, as far as pick goes, well, us, when do you think Shashevsky is going to call it quits? Oh, well, listen, he's he's a he doesn't he doesn't want to do it anytime soon. I feel like yeah, but he, he, you know, here's the thing: Jim Salin, coach at St. Bonaventure. Ended up going to Duquesne, he says, you have to realize when you've taken them to a plateau and you can't go any higher. And my question is, has that happened in North Carolina with the Tar Heels? Well, I mean, look, they're having... They're having, uh, they haven't had a year like this in some time. Well, I mean, think about out of how many years, decades or whatever, they have one season where things are just not meshing. You know, I'm not gonna, if I'm a North Carolina fan, I don't have a panic button just yet, but you know, Pitt swept them this year. Yeah. So even though North Carolina's not their best year, you know, you still can say you slept, you swept North Carolina. So, um, I, I don't know, the ACC's not that good this year compared to previous years. So this is a year Pitt can, you know, just Make some strides, man. Listen, they got what at least ten games left. If they win six of their last ten, then that's twenty wins right there. Good for a pit. Um, 
But now listen, I know you want to talk some Penguins hockey. We gotta take a break. But we'll take a break, then we'll talk some hockey. This program furnished by the Mad Unit, Mobile Auto Detailing, C. Michael Sad at the madunit.com. These fine businesses provided funding for this program. Gatherings, Town and Country, and On Target. Hello friends, Pinella Brothers, 1701 Hamilton Street, provided funding for this program. Great food and drink, Pinella Brothers. We're back, and uh, it's a hockey. It's time. hockey time, and um, what I mean by that, obviously, college basketball is still going on. But the Pens are winning. But you know, Pittsburgh is a hockey town as well as a football, and I still even dare say baseball town. So, um, but Crosby. And the, Peng the Penguins are five and two since Crosby returned. Yeah. So yeah. things are definitely looking up for the Pens. You know, and it's always good. You know, it's always a good weekend when you uh, when you're able to take down uh, Philadelphia. And uh, yeah, they're, and they're looking good on national TV too. Yeah, that you know, that. And and you know what? I have the thing when Pittsburgh teams look good. It's good for the sport. Well, Whatever the sport is. You know, nothing against the Super Bowl yesterday, but it didn't have what it needed to have to get the ratings that it really needed. Well, I mean, obviously with the Super Bowl, uh, you know, the commercials and the halftime show, those are obviously well-known things that go on in the but, Super Bowl, but... I don't know, I kind of feel like it's all, that was almost like the thing I heard most about this game compared to any other Super Bowl. Maybe it was just me, but everyone was saying, everyone was so excited to see if there was going to be a wardrobe malfunction or whatever during the halftime show. I think you blacked out the whole East Coast. Yeah, like. It, it, okay, Kansas City's a regional team at best. And. That's why I like them. Uh, okay, and they're not a uh, glamour city like, like a San Fran. As San Fran, I don't see them as a glamour team. I see them as a West Coast mm, big market type of city. Yeah, that's kind of what I mean. And it doesn't go beyond that. And I'm happy for Kansas City. That was the first championship since 1969, I believe. Now, so yeah, what wow. hurts is I remember when they played. To Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, I mean, imagine being a fan of one of those franchises that haven't won anything. Eight streams really, uh, mm -hmm. really laid the hammer down. And yeah, I you know, know <coughs> okay. I was going to say one other thing, and uh, the the Super Bowl. It used to be the end. How do you feel with this XFL? Man, sometimes I really get turned off by the NFL, whether it's political stuff going on, or, you know, I feel I, like the refs are doing a terrible job, or, you know, I feel like the game is being degraded as the world changes. I, I, think, I think the XFL is going to help football. Yeah. Well, well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I felt the first time. I was in sixth grade when it happened. Okay, so fast forward all these years later. Vince McMahon, WWE chairman, sees what's going on in the NFL. Um, it was two years ago or whatever with the Kaepernick thing, he, the political protest. Vince McMahon, you know, rears his ugly head, and man, he's he's a real son of a. He's a he's not a good dude. He sees what you can do now. He wants to you know, hey, let's bring back the XFL. The NFL, you know, is really is really getting some flack. So he's promoting pure football. No political crap. No, you know, none of the, none of the soft stuff that he would say. He just thinks the NFL is becoming soft. 
it, I, I think it'll be something to where people will turn tune into. I'm not saying it's gonna surpass the NFL by you know any means, but with the way the NFL is receiving, it might be just the thing to have a nice little buffer well, yeah, in the I mean, spring where. A lot of people don't have a lot of things going on. Yeah, people, I feel like... Most don't look to this. Yeah. Um, well, we're going to have to leave it there. Mm -hmm. You take it easy, Alex. And just remember, I'll, I got one last question, if you don't mind. Oh, Who predicted that final score? No, sure, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> have, a, have a great week, everybody. Hello, everyone.